So <laughs> you're always thinking, oh, I should have been able to get that. Well, then we brought in Ray Hearn mm. because I think, I don't want to think because I know a little bit about golf that I should make decisions about this historic place. So I run everything by him. He's a historian. Mm -hmm. And we are making changes to the golf course because the golf course needs to be managed. Mm -hmm. You know, trees get huge and they yeah, they not, die. Yeah, not and a they, dozen of them over there. Yeah. yeah. It's because actually, you know, when I talked to Ray, the original architect wanted these angles in these playing lines and they don't exist because of the trees have imposed they get big over 50 years and 100 yeah. years they yeah. get so big that they need to be managed and so you're not doing wrong when you manage them i asked uh i wondered how many trees do we have at washington and i figured the only reason the only way i'm going to get the answer is to go out and count them <laughs> so i did it's 1298 Okay. Yeah, for instance, a lot of our trees grew into each other. So as they get bigger, they grow into each other, and it's not healthy for either of them. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to get so that there's a, every tree that's out there, there's a reason for it to be. Sometimes it's just a nice tree. We have the, It's painful on the 11th hole. We've got a big, beautiful, beautiful tree. It's so in the wrong place that it's oh. going to have to be eventually taken. Because there's no no grass underneath it, and it's imposing on the green. Uh -oh. You know what I mean? And it's just going to get bigger. And uh, so we should think, when wherever a tree is, what's it going to be in 40 years from now? We should actually make the job easier for the people who are here 40 years from now. I <laughs> I'm hope. My so... I got this message from Ray Hearn, and it's uh, and I call him back, and I get a recorder, and it says Ray Hearn Golf Associates. So, I finally we get hooked up. He comes in. I said, Ray, you're in the golf business. What do you do? Oh my gosh! Long pause. I'm a golf course architect. Okay, so this hole, number 14, part three, plays uh, about 180, depending on which tee, tee position you play from. The left side, um, a couple years ago, I took out 15 or 16 trees, big, big, old black oaks and hickories. Um, at one point, you could not hit a fade. If you're right-hander, you couldn't hit a fade on this hole. 
now we open it up and you can curve a little fade in um, we're public now so you know 80 percent of golfers hit a fade or a slice so uh we made I did little, not know that yeah we made it a lot easier for the average golfer to to play well in this hole um years ago you would almost have to hit a draw into here or a straight shot which not many people can hit a straight shot we also made the approach area squared and much wider and there used to be a strip of rough between the approach and the green and now we mow that all the way up to the green into the green basically so it's um just trying to make it a little easier this hole is always really tough and uh it's still a tough hole <laughs> yeah. and the green's very difficult but um it's a little easier to play now for the average golfer for the public golf so here we are at old 14 we this is now a practice slash chipping area for the members and the season pass holders um this bunker here that you see is probably going to be cut in half and we're going to put a tee right in this area so that 15 will play a little longer we don't have any par fours in the back nine that are substantial Long. good distance so this is the hole that over the next couple years we'll add a tee right in this area and fill in part of this bunker we'll leave part of the bunker for the practice and the season pass guys can come and still practice out of it but um being a practice area, we don't need this huge bunker and this is a good place for us to add yardage to the back nine so this is number 15 um part four we took out probably 20 ish 20 or so trees on the right side here and another at least 10 on the left side of the fairway. At one point this hole was just a little shoot. Um, very difficult to hit the fairway off the tee and if you did hit the fairway you would, could still be stymied by trees on the right. So we opened it up a lot more and just make it more playable, more fun, better shot angles. Um, just an overall funner hole now. I don't see any more trees coming out on this hole for quite some time. Although there's a few on the left side that uh, we might have to take out just because they're, they're, they're not healthy. Looks pretty good. But there's some, um, there's some health questions on some of the ones up further. Uh, I had cut a few down a few years ago and the center of the trees were rotted. Okay. But it didn't look rotted. So, yeah. you know, I mean, there's a couple over there at the base of them. You can see the holes in them. Yes. Oh, yeah, I see that. Yes. So, I mean... It, at some point that'll have to be addressed. This is number 16, par four. Uh, another, it's a short par four, but um, years ago, it was just a little narrow shoot. It was like a tunnel down this hole. And uh, we've widened it, probably 20 trees on the left side, another 10 or 15 on the right. Um, to make it more playable, you know? It's a lot more forgiving now. You can curve it in any which way you want. Um, just a funner, more easier hold out. All in all, it's a, it's a good and change. Um, it makes leaf removal easier in the fall also. And uh, we had poor, poor turf quality under these trees. So there was a lot of dirt and uh, they were too close together, too big. They hung way over the fairway. Um, so I think all in all, it's been a better, it, it's been an improvement. And you got a, you got a few more years to go before, like, is Matt the master plan? Are you following that pretty religiously, or you kind of once you and Ray get together, you kind of both kind of uh, you know make decisions on things? Well, or? yeah, we we work together on that. I mean, there's um, you usually get agree with everything that either one of us comes up with. Yeah. Um, for the most part, I don't, I can't think of any times that we have disagreed with each other. So we've added um, a rock wall around the pond. We were experiencing a lot of erosion <laughs> and the approach was getting uh, smaller and smaller and around the green was getting smaller. So we did this to slow down that erosion issue. Also our fountain, um, we had to order another one. The other one broke on us, but we're gonna have a fountain there next spring. Um, the back of the green used to have a big crimson king maple back right, which shadowed the entire green. Uh, we removed that and a couple pear trees and a birch, sick birch tree that was behind the green. And then left of the approach, we had about six uh, pear trees over there. Cleveland or Bradford pears. And uh, they weren't doing us any favor with turf quality in that area, so we removed those too. 
Well, Mark Pappas, thanks for this interview. We appreciate it. We really enjoy the course. Now that we can play it ourselves, uh, it's just it's wonderful what you've done here. Appreciate it. Thank you.
I'm Jenny McCafferty for Michigan Golfer, and we're at Washtenaw Golf Club, and with us is Ken McLaughlin, who's always busy because he takes care of all the flowers, and I don't think any golf club has prettier flowers. Well, thanks very much. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's uh, it's, a, it's something that's, that's disappearing uh, from golf courses in general, I hear. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. Well, you wouldn't know it here. They're in, they're in front as you drive in. They're all around the clubhouse. They're all around the course. So how did you first get interested in flowers? Well, a um, long time ago, about 30 years ago, when I started here, I was just a member of the crew. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, did flowers about part half the day and worked on the crew the other half. Okay. And they all they had was annuals at the time. This was decades ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just asked my boss one day, what do you think about we switch the general theme up of including some shrubs and perennials and mm -hmm. make it a little more complex? And he agreed and off I went. I went to the Master Gardener classes here in Ann no Arbor. Kidding. Yes. Wow. And uh, just found a love for it and continued. So you find all different colors, all different shapes, all different, I mean, some are little, some are tall. Mm -hmm. How do you go about picking the right flower for the place, like right behind us? Well, uh, essentially, it's first I think about light, how much light the plants oh. need, if, yeah. and if this area will have that. Mm -hmm. And then there's soil uh, drainage, mm -hmm. things of that nature. And then as you're pr progressing into the garden, you're mixing colors, textures, Mm -hmm. Plants have different texture, leaves have different texture. Mm -hmm. All those things you combine in an element that is pleasing to the eyes. So all that stuff you think about so we don't have to. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ken, it's always a treat to come. Even though we're here several times a week, I always notice something different. So congratulations on making it such a fun experience. Well, thanks very much. It's my pleasure.